All right, guys. Started stretching this morning. Um, we got out here, and y'all seen it the other day when we were done. But uh, we started stretching this morning, and as far as I can stretch it, the fence stops right here. I couldn't get it to about right there. So I was only lacking about four feet. So I had this piece of the same fence piece left over. So what I did is wired it together and then crimped it and wound it together. And so what I'm gonna do is stretch this <coughs> right in there is where it's crimped together and spliced together. So what I'm gonna do is stretch it as one piece and wrap it around right there. As you can see, you got the animals out here. They're enjoying it. Plenty to eat. The uh, donkeys and um, cow are up there somewhere. Right there. Oh, the cow's right there. The, the grass is so tall you can barely see her. The donkeys just came back in and went over here in the hole where the water hose is. Then what we're going to do, I'll show you all in a minute when we get over there. We get this fence done, we're going to put the water trough over here that way we can shut that gate during the day and they can't go eat on that grass and they can just stay over here and just focus on this one but we got it splicing now so we're fixing to try to stretch it all right guys we got it stretched now we're just going to strip these up right top of this tied around this post. I thought I could go back to the other pasture and turn around one the other way. Look at me, change your mind. I'm gonna make sure this is long enough. Because what it does, if you watch, um, anybody that kind of explains how to do this high tensile and tie it around your post and not nail it. Um, and when I watch this Farm Fence Solution on Stony Ridge's channel, and I watched a lot of theirs, how they taught how to tie, but you pull it and then you'll push your fence in and just bend it over it. And what that does is when you re finally release all the pressure off your fence and it pulls, that little bit of bend when it straightens this out just tightens the fence up and it don't give it a spot to loose but uh you go over and you go behind this one that you brought back 
and I'm not sure, but I think when you come back up on this side, but then the guy from Farm Fence Solutions, I can't remember his name, but uh, he always tells you to grab your handle. So then you're gonna give it three wraps, three tight wraps. One, two, three, and you bend it past, back like that, and you'll grab your handle and bring it back to you, and then twist it toward your wraps, and it snaps off. And then you got a good, smooth cut right there. No, mine don't always work that smooth. I'm not a professional fencer, but a lot of them do. As long as you leave a good handle spot to hold on to it when you're wrapping, they usually work that easy. A lot of times I try to get cheap and not leave me some hand spot and not try to cut as much fence off. But on the Stony Ridge channel, he used all metal posts. So what they did is they took all these breakoffs and dropped them down in the post. I just pile them up and take them all to the house, put them in a pile, and then take my scrap metal off. Whenever I get a bunch in, or a bunch piled up. Pretty much we're gonna repeat that process on this whole piece of fence. I'll show y'all one more, and then I'll cut. So y'all ain't gonna this slow, tedious stuff. Over and hold it over on this one. And you can slide it down if you want to hold it more steady. But these are these knots are twirled. So what I do to make them easier to slide off is I untwist them, the two pieces. And you can do it with your hands and some gloves, but it's just easier to just loosely put your pliers on here and grab it. You just pull it off. So then I'm gonna get the wife to bring this camera in closer when I start tying. I'll give y'all a little closer up of how I do it. Like I said, it might not be perfect, but I haven't watched a how to fence video in months since I started doing all this high tensile stuff. I just, but you got you a good long stretch right here. So you pull it tight, make sure you're straight and not angled up or down because you're pulling all that slack out. And the more slack you get out now, the less the fence is going to give when you do release the pressure off of it. But, uh, got you a good handle here. Pull it, and then you're going to push in on the fence and bend it. So then you come up. Between the wire and the post. But then when you come up, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he goes over that wire and back down and around. And what that does is kind of gives it a spot where it grabs that wire and it ain't going to slide. But then do three tight wraps. And it gets harder down here around this brace wire. And it's really tough right there at the ground, as tight as it is to the ground. And then you got those bigger the bigger round wires, the higher gauge wire. I'll do one more. Okay, so you bend it past, like you're gonna go around, and then you bring it back, grab your handle, twist towards your wraps, and that one ain't gonna work. <laughs> there it goes, it breaks off. All right, I'll get the rest of these done and we'll touch back in a minute. All right, guys. Get all that done. So now we're going to go around and tie the fence to the T-post. And this T-post I'm using right here is just a tad. It's about almost a foot off the fence, but I can't move it 
because it marks the right of way for the Georgia Power. But I'm going to use it to tie my fence too until they yell at me for it. So I'm going to struggle with this one for a minute. Getting it on. But I figured I'd show you all this one. <laughs>
stand on it. Put the foot in that hole. So we've gotten the one right there done, the one right here done. So we are going to work our way up through there. We'll touch back with y'all in a minute.
right, guys. We got it in the ground. Um, as she explained just a minute ago that some of the shorter, the little goats and stuff can't get in these water troughs if we just sit them at ground level um, without almost falling into them. So we bury them. And we're hoping burying it right here until we get a roof over it. We get in the middle of July and August. It'll keep kind of keep the water cool too with the dirt around it like that. But uh, try it to work good. I'm still learning how to drive it, of course. But uh, got one little water leak I just noticed. The uh, this one right here is leaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and order one of those. We got some other hydraulic leaks around. These two fittings are leaking. Um, I think really that's the main one that's got a decent leak on it. So I'll tighten those up. Snug them up if they're snug and they're still leaking, then I will uh, pull them off and see if they need to o-ring or something in there so they don't leak but I'm not planning on using a whole lot until I get all that stuff fixed on it so I'm just trying it out still just a little bit so I'm fixing to go take it put it back up at the house try to get it washed up this evening maybe not sure but I think we're gonna go add two t-posts in I'll show you all that in a minute and then we are going to be done for the day. It's getting hot. We got established, accomplished what we wanted to get accomplished, which is made this pasture secure. Got them some water out here so we can lock them in here if we need to for a couple hours, keep them off this other pasture. Got them some water, got them secured. Get these two T-posts in and they'll be good to go for a while. And then I think our next task I got some forks coming to clamp onto the bucket there. And so what we're gonna do, our next task is to fix that chicken coop right there. I'm gonna take the pallets off, out from under it, put it on the ground, raise the roof a little bit so we can walk through it without the wife hitting her head. Uh, extend the tin out on the back about a foot, foot and a half over the late nesting boxes. And so... More chicken or 16 uh, barred rock layers are coming shipping out monday i believe from mcmurray hatchery so we should have them that should be on the next video and this is probably the second video i've got to put together and put out so uh, i'll try to get them done this evening maybe since we're done and it's hot but uh i'll get some video in a minute where we're putting these t-posts at and why and then we'll close out all right so we got all these, this is that first run of fence. If y'all could see all the way up there is that other pasture in the opening. But this is that first run of fence, which turned out pretty good, pretty straight. But uh, the two T posts we gotta put in is the one right here. And we're gonna put another one right there. And the reason is you see the dip. So we've got one at the crest and I had one here, but let me step back here and get a better view. That dip right there, the fence was probably six, eight inches off the ground. And the goats, at least the two small ones, will go under that. So we put that T-post in there and drove it down to the ground. So then right here, it's probably not, right there is probably the worst spot. And it's probably only two, three inches up. But with that green grass on the other side, if he gets back here wandering around, especially MJ, the boy. He will ease right up under that, um, which is what he did over by the house on a loose spot of fence. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this T-post, we're gonna put it right there, and we are going to drive it down. And I'll show y'all how I do that.
guys. Instead of trying to hold it down and tie it in all at the same time, what I do is I drive the post down to where the top of the fence is at the top of the post. And then I'll put my tie at the bottom and I'll put my second tie right here. And then I'll drive, I'll pull the fence out, drive the post down to where the fence touches the ground. And I'll put my top two ties on. to get these bottom two as tight as I can get them so they'll hug this post and won't be slipping past the little nubs right there. Two on. Now we'll drive it down snug and put our top two on. It on the on that this section all the way up through here it is done all the way down to that corner and then this one all the way over to the H brace all the way out through yonder um, we ain't got any ties on that yet it's standing up it's tight as a banjo string, well, not a banjo string, it's pretty tight. But, uh, see it standing up on its own. And what I'll do is, because we're done for the day, it's hot, we're tired, and I got a hot date tonight. So, what I'll do is I'll take and just stick it over that top post there. And it won't let it fall down. It's all flat on the ground on this run. So I ain't gonna worry about any of that.
but I get time during the week. That's coming out, putting ties on the stuff is what I kind of do during the week. Uh, little stuff like that, piddling around, because I ain't got a whole lot of hours after I work all day. But I'll come home and get some ties on and uh, just check fence and just piddle, little stuff. These big projects like getting the H braces built and stretching fence is what we like to do on Saturdays when we got the time and we're not busy. All of last month we were busy, every Saturday. That's why it didn't get done last month. But uh, we got it done, the animals are in here. They're actually, they left a while ago when I was on the tractor digging that hole for the water trough. They all left, the tractor scared them. But they're working their way back over here now. So, uh, and they all went and found a spot to lay down. It's hot, like I said, it's probably close to 88 degrees today, I'm not sure. But it's nicely cool in this hole. <laughs> So, I think we're done for the day, ain't we? We're gonna go probably play with animals a minute and go cool off in the house, uh, take showers, get ready to go. Like I said, I got a hot date tonight. Hot date. And then uh, we may come back later and uh, have a little fire back here relax bring our chair our zero gravity chairs back here relax and burn some brush have a little fire not nothing major but uh i thank y'all for watching again um i'll try to get this video in the other one i've got halfway edited loaded like i said tonight if i get a chance if not i'll do it maybe tomorrow in between church um but again thank y'all for watching like subscribe share it um try to get us up there in some views Again, thank y'all for everybody that's helped teach me what I know. Um, those that put their channels out. Uh, Sutherland, uh, Stony Ridge, just a few acres. Um, Country View Acres. Uh, there's so many that I watch and learn from. But thanks everybody for y'all putting y'all's content out and teaching me everything I know. Y'all have a good weekend. Wife got her new little toy here. <clears throat> bought at uh, homedepot.com it's got a little 24 volt battery uh, most of the reviews say it runs about 30 minutes on one charge but what it is is just a little cultivator what it is you can see all the weeds in the garden and she had one of them little hand push and pull cultivators and that was the worst thing i've ever had in my life <laughs> worst thing she's ever had in her life but uh, next year, um, I think we're going to cover it with the weed protection and then burn the holes through like a lot of other people have done it. But this is our first year in the garden, and y'all know that. So, uh, But what she's done, like that, the rows right here, all look... It looked like that right here. But i done those by hand. And all, that yeah, and all those were done by hand last week, and that's grown back. So uh, these rows, she just done, been out here maybe 15 minutes and's already got that much of it done. So uh, it's working real good. She's enjoying it. She thinks it's a whole lot better than that hand cultivator. But she's leaves up kind of like a handheld. Killer, I guess you'd call it. Call the cultivator killer. This whole row right here is a tomato plant but if you can see this right here looks like tomato plant and what we figured out is when i was moving the pig pen dragging it all these rows and stuff right there is where i had gotten a bunch of cherry tomatoes and let the pigs the pigs eat it and so i'm guessing that's what all that is, is where it, we got into the ground. So we got a bunch of volunteer cherry tomatoes, but we're gonna let, we're gonna teal back from this row. We're gonna teal back a little bit, but we're gonna let them grow and see how good they put out.
Ugh. <laughs>